This video was made possible through a grant from the Haas Corporation. The Geek Group would like to thank Haas for their continued support in helping encourage innovation in design and manufacturing in America. The Geek Group proudly features ISCAR tooling in all of our workshops, videos, and hackerspaces around the globe. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Niskar Rick. Welcome to the Geek Group. In today's episode, how to load and unload tools from your machine. This is one of those thrilling, complicated ones. It's a, it's a tough one. But this is actually kind of cool on this one because we got the carousel. We got the carousel. And you have to put the tools in through the spindle in order for them to go into the carousel. You can't just climb up on the side and load like no, 20 tools. No, you they you just have go, to do it. Yeah, they go through. It's the proper way to do it. It's a it. system. It's a system. Okay. And the so system works. There's two buttons for this. Yep. There's nope. the one out here, there's, and one, there's one in there. That's correct. And you can't do this in software or anything? No. Uh, no. Okay. So, how do we load a tool in the machine? Well, we need to be in, we need to be in handle. Okay. Okay. That, so, we're in hand jog. We're in hand jog. It means we can open and close the doors. Okay. We open and close the doors, and there's a button up on the head, and you push the button while you're hanging onto the tool, and it releases. There's also a button out here. Mm-hmm. Why is there a button out here? Um, I think over, I don't know. Because if you press that right now, it will, drop it will the tool. fall out. Onto that's the, correct. That's generally considered bad form. That yes, small well, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's good for the tool salesman. <laughs> Escar likes it. When yeah, that's you do right. That. No, I th I think I could be wrong, but uh, I guess back in the older days when the machines were a lot smaller, this was where the button for releasing the tool. Okay. You know, because you could reach because it was right here. They were smaller machines. Yeah. But now and, to do that with this machine, you'd be like, right. Well, it, what about a what a bit of VF11? It's huge. Okay. All right. Yeah, it, but it's still got the button. It's still got the button. There's got to be a reason for it somewhere. I don't know. Ask. Okay. So how do you do it? All right. So uh, we're in our hand jog. Open the doors. And there's a button right here for this. You want to hang on to the tool so you don't drop it. That's okay. kind of important. Push the button. <laughs> now, I it. noticed that it wasn't just the drill that came out in your hand. You've got this big thing no, that this just is magically the, appeared. This is, no, it's stuck up in the spindle. This is a, what this, is this and what does it do? This is a Cat 40 taper. Okay, because this is a Cat 40, 40 machine. machine. But these come in different sizes. Yep. And pretty much all Haas machines have some kind of a tool holder. A 40 or a 50. Okay. Yep. So, but this is a tool holder. That's correct. That now, holds the tool. This particular tool holder has the taper here. Yep. It's got this part up here. That's a retention knob. And then we've got this down here, this but is a this, this, this changes a million times. But right. from, from here there, up, oh. it's pretty much all the same. Yes. Okay. For this size. For this size. Now, when you put the tool in there, when I press this button, even without a tool in there, mm -hmm. right. there is something's a, happening. There's a big long rod with a bunch of diaphragm springs and a claw, if you will. Okay. And it claw comes down and opens up. All right. And when you release the button, it grabs them and sucks it up. Okay. And these spring washers hold it in place very rigidly against the taper. So this taper here, this mm -hmm. angle, yep. is a very precision angle. Oh, this very. is a Cat 40 yep. tool holder taper angle, and there's, there's math for that. Mm -hmm. But this is the same. Every, any Cat 40 tool holder is that. will fit in this machine. That's correct. Now, there's also these two those dogs. Are the, those are the drive, drive flanges, drive okay. dogs. Drive dogs. That's, and these match on here. That's correct. So that's what drives it. So if I put this in the machine, and those are facing, let's say, front and back, and I've got this it left and right. It won't go It in. won't go. Now, I would imagine, given that this looks very precision, smooth, and ground, mm -hmm. it's very important to not have chips, crud, dirt, rust, dirt. Anything. Okay, this has to be super clean. Very clean. They even make a squeegee tool that you to, can use to go up in there and, and clean, clean that this. out and yep. make sure it's clean. Yep. Now, here's a weird thing. I noticed that this has a hole in the end, mm -hmm. and on our old machine, we still had Cat 40, but they didn't have a hole in the That's end. That's through, through spindle coolant. So what's that? We can pump coolant through the spindle, down through here onto the tool. At high pressure. At high pressure. That's some pretty serious engineering. You know, to whether it be that out. the 30 pounds for a stock one or 300 psi to 1,000, and you know, I've seen as high as 2,000 psi. And you can get drill bits that this comes out the end sure. and shoots and the This car actually really. makes a drill that's 93 thousandths in diameter that has through coolant holes in it. I want to know how they get those holes in there. I'm kind of curious about that. It's a so, secret. To put this in, Yep. You, you just lean in, you put this in here, and you make sure you're lined up. Yep, push the button. And, and you just push very gently, you don't ram it or anything. You press this. this. And let go. And it sucks it and up. It, and it's, that's it's it. there. You it's can not, hang from that. That's not yes, coming out. it's not coming out. So that's got our tool in the machine. Yep. And it's really that easy. You just you hold the tool in one hand, make sure yep. you've got a good grip on it. 
And everything, the ring here and below, is what's going to come out. That's correct. So you press the button, and you've got the tool. you got the so tool. So you grab your other tool, and you can. it works the same way with this button. I can do this out here. Yep. And just line that up, and now we're in. That's correct. So this is really simple with this kind of thing, but sure. you can get these that hold all kinds of different stuff. Sure. Like this is a simple drill, but we've got like, this is the, the T490. And that's a two incher. Yeah. We make this up to 10 inches. But I, will this eat that? It will, will hold it? it. It won't go through the tool changer, it, but it will hold it. That would make expensive sounds. Right. Yes. And then the Haas does have a feature if you have a heavy or a long tool that slows the speed of the tool changer down so you don't throw the tool onto the table just because of its sheer weight and mass. Okay. A tool like this is fine to go at high speed. Okay. But as you get into larger tools, you, know, you got to make sure that they fit through the tool changer or you're going to have to hand load them and unload them. How do you know the limit for what you can There's, there's the... specs in the book for what it'll take. Okay. So yeah, there's a weight if... limit and a diameter and length limit. Okay. You just read the specs and if it fits within there, it'll go through the tool changer. Okay. Yeah. As but, simple as that. But it's something to be aware of that it is quite possible to put tools in here that you can't run through the changer exactly. or, or that might... It, with a big giant one, this will spin that, and there may be some crazy operation where you need that big 16-inch cutter in here. But yeah, that's highly. If yeah. you spin that up to speed, it's going to get ugly fast. Uh, yes, it's a little so. common sense goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that. Yep. And there it is, a T490 in the spindle. That's awesome. Yep. All right, I'm going to push back to our drill because that's what they're using for the program. Got it. So I'll take this one. You can add that one back. And now, is there? A lot of things in the machine tool world are little rituals, like habits. M one of the ones that I've seen a lot of guys do is when they pick up a new one of these, mm -hmm. they just wipe their hand around it. That's just good like practice. That. They, just, yep. they just go like that and then stick it in the machine. That's good practice. Now, how delicate is this? Do you have to be careful when you stick that in there, or can you just... Because well, you you know, it's like bumping against the sides. You don't want to bump it, because okay. if you dent it, that makes an imperfection that will show up in the run out of the tool. So, so you want to be a little careful when you sure. put that in there. and then. Okay. When the tools... When the tools are in the spindle and they're doing what they're designed to do, they're very robust. They take a tremendous amount of heat and pressure and pounding. They're very good. But okay. when you take them out, they're actually rather fragile. When they're in their environment, they're tough as can be. Okay. But when they're laying, you can set this on, on the bench and chip an insert. But you can set it up in the spindle and take a 30 horsepower cut. It doesn't care. That's one of the things I've noticed is with stuff like, uh, like here, like this right here. Mm -hmm. Finish shred end mill. Yeah, I can put that in there and hog out P2 all day long. Sure. Tough steel. Yep. But if I drop this on the floor, it's two pieces. Yeah, it's garbage yep. instantly. Yep. And it, it's you just have to an be delicate concept. with them when they're not in the machine. Okay. When they're in the machine and they do what they're supposed to do, they're phenomenal. So when it's not in the machine, it lives in the nice little rack that they provide for you oh, yes. on the side of the yep. machine. That's a good place for them. All right, so that covers pretty much everything there is to know for just putting the tools, tools in, in and out of the machine. Yep. There's more to it for setting tools up. Yes. Um, and especially for using the tool You'll changer change and all that. Everything, yes. But we'll cover that in future videos Next when we one. get into the tool changer and the setting up of tools sure. and stuff like that. Okay, yep. cool. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching. I'm Chris Bowden. I'm Miss Car Rick. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible in part by Mastercam, whose CAD CAM software provides the base to all code generated for Geek Group CNC projects. The Geek Group would like to extend our deepest gratitude to the Gene Haas Foundation for making this program possible. Thanks to their generous contribution, we are able to train and inspire machinists all around the globe. Operating the CNC machines in this video risks personal injury and mechanical damage. Hazards may include electricity, untrained operation, airborne toxins, flying debris and noise, fire and explosions, poor shop upkeep, sharp tooling, projectiles, loose clothing, inadequate clamping, automatic operation, automatic tool changer, unsupported bar, over-tightened steady rest, lack of enclosure, and impact. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.